This is now the most powerful Subaru Crosstrek you can buy. We have a full review and off-road test right now on Driving Sports TV. It was just a couple months ago where we had our first drive in the all-new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek. In short, it was more refined, looked better, and featured a greatly improved interior. So there was still one issue that had yet to be resolved. It didn't have enough power. So that brings us to this, the all-new 2024 Subaru Crosstrek with the updated and improved 2.5-liter boxer engine. It's also gonna be built here in the United States at their Indiana factory. The model we're testing today is the Sport, which is right in the middle of the lineup. This includes a number of premium features, including dual function X mode, the all weather package, wireless phone charging, and steering responsive LED headlights. A note on those headlights, they're actually a standard feature on every trim level now, which is pretty cool. The one we have here is fitted with a number of options and it's painted Alpine green. The Crosstrek Sport starts at $30,290 US dollars, including destination. The model we have here does have some extra packages, so it costs a little bit more. Under the hood is a 2.5 liter boxer engine that's updated from the previous model. It features a peak output of 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM and 178 pound-feet of torque at 3,700. Yes, you get two more torques over the outgoing model. It's connected to Subaru's Linear Tronic CVT and power goes to all four wheels thanks to symmetrical all-wheel drive. Unfortunately, you cannot get this with a manual and in fact, Subaru has even dropped the manual from the smaller 2.0 engine, which is unfortunate. EPA rates economy at 26 miles to the gallon in the city and 33 on the highway, which is still best in class. Combined with a decent sized fuel tank and you can see almost 500 miles of range. It's basically the same formula as the last generation Crosstrek Sport. If equipped with a dealer installed hitch, you can tow up to 1,500 pounds. If you need to tow more, you'll have to get the Wilderness trim, which increases that to 3,500. So what makes this new one new? Well, basically everything else. The interior features a massive vertical touchscreen, like the one found in the larger Outback. The seats have been improved, they're more comfortable, and when equipped with seat warmers, they now even get hotter than ever before. Hey, the paint, it's sparkly. In the back, you get 19.9 cubic feet behind the second row. Fold all seats flat for up to 54.7 cubic feet. The body is sleeker now with improved aerodynamics. It also has functional vents all around. Front fender, it's aluminum for weight savings. The chassis rigidity has been increased, while the suspension has been softened. This improves safety without creating a harsh ride. And speaking of safety, EyeSight has been updated. It now has a wider field of view to help avoid getting into an accident in the first place. Okay, here we are inside. And actually, I'm a little surprised here. I own a Crosstrek Sport, a 2021 when it first came out and they've made a lot of changes to this interior. Okay, let's cover all the details, but first, let's power it up. Okay, the gauge cluster is the same as before, that's good. Uh, over here though, we now have this massive 11 something or other display. It's a big tablet display, basically. Now this is, of course, uh, borrowed from the Outback. That's where it first appeared and it's slowly trickling across the whole lineup. Uh, one thing that I like about it here is that it's now updated to handle wireless Apple CarPlay and you also get a wireless charger at this trim level. You don't have to add it as an option, which is really nice. Above it, you also get an auxiliary audio input as well as a USB-C and USB-A sockets. Further, they've enhanced it so that it not only is more responsive, but you also have quick access to a number of the common features. Uh, specifically, the climate controls down here are all much easier to read and they're easier to use. And they have moved the seat warmers from down here to a switch over here, which is important because sometimes it's super cold, you wanna get in the car, you wanna get that on, 
now you can do it. You don't have to wait for this thing to boot up. Also, if you don't like the auto start stop function, it is one push button away, it's right there. And then if you wanna dive deeper into the vehicle, you can always just click the vehicle here and now you have all the setup you would ever want. Everything from vehicle dynamics control to the auto hold, uh, to the way the cruise control functions. Now this does have adaptive cruise control thanks to the updated EyeSight system, which you know is one of the nice features about Subarus is that pretty much all the trims have enhanced EyeSight. And EyeSight is great because it gives you forward collision uh, mitigation, uh, but then it also gives you adaptive cruise control with lane centering. It's one of the best in the business, which I really enjoy using on especially long trips. Now the vehicle here also has blind spot warning, which is a nice feature. And if you go up a trim level, you also get rear auto braking. This one doesn't have it. It just has a rear view camera with guidelines, which is a nice feature. Although, can we just go back to that rear view camera here? That is the same old crummy rear view camera that I have in my 2021. I kind of hope that if they were moving to a new chassis that they would fix that, but eh, here it is in 2024's model year. Okay, going back to the main screen. Obviously we can set up all this stuff. And then as far as like driving assistance, the collision warning, lane departure, you can kind of set parameters there as to how you want it set up. The model we're testing today does have a few option packages added. So we do see blind spot warning here. Uh, we also have rear cross traffic alerts. Uh, normally on the trims, you need to go up to the limited if you wanna have rear cross traffic alerts as a standard feature. The steering wheel is exactly the same as the last Crosstrek Sport. You have a nice compact layout of the buttons. We have SI drive down here. And then we also have paddle shifters up here, uh, which are kind of fun to play with. Do you really need to use them in a CVT? Not usually but it's a nice option. We also have voice commands. Please say a command. Set my temperature to 65 degrees. Okay, setting temperature to 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if you're not loving having so many things integrated in the head unit, uh, the nice thing is you do get physical buttons here for temperature up down, as well as defrost, tune, and volume. And then back on the home screen here, we can go through all the other stuff. We have shortcut keys, which I like. You can just add those here. Let's do a setting. Let's add a setting here. If I wanna disable the steering responsive headlights, I can actually add that as a button there. So I can very easily set up things I want to enable and disable with just a flick and a push, which is really cool. I like the fact that they let, let you really customize this. In here, you also get to set up your radio, which this has XM satellite radio, a nice feature. Uh, if it had navigation, that would be here too, but at this trim level, you don't get navigation. You have to rely on Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for that functionality. Um, above this, this is where you control X mode. In the old one, it was dual mode X mode with a button down below. Now it's a soft button up here, and they have enhanced X mode on this vehicle. Now, when you go over the threshold speed where X mode functions, I think it's about 25 miles per hour, uh, it will no longer disable the system altogether when you do that. Now you go over it and it won't function, but when you go back under that threshold speed, it'll then re-engage. So you don't have to constantly be finding the X mode button. So for that reason alone, I think it's okay that it's up in software. Uh, on the older trim where it actually disables the function, having a hardware button was a little bit nicer. In the previous generation, the Sport was the off-roady model. Now, with the Wilderness trim coming out later this year, they've pushed a few of the features that you did get in the Sport up to the Wilderness, specifically mud mats and StarTex simulated leather on the seats. Here, they're fabric and cloth, and I think it's actually okay. They are trying to hit a price point here, so I think going with the larger display, something kind of had to give, and moving StarTex up to the more expensive Wilderness trim makes sense. Okay, I think we have covered everything. We have a sunroof, we have visors. I think it's time to take this for a drive. Even though I own a 2.5 liter Crosstrek Sport from 2021, 
Uh, I've been driving a lot of the wilderness trims lately, and specifically the Forester Wilderness has the same powertrain as this, but it has a different rear differential, which gives you more kick off the line. Uh, so this one actually feels a little bit slower. Uh, I expect the same thing to happen with the new Crosstruck Wilderness. With a 411 gear reduction in the back, you're gonna get more kick off the line in exchange for economy. This one, however, gives you the power of the 2.5, uh, but also maintains really good fuel economy at the same time. And in terms of like highway driving, yeah, it's fun, you know? it's It has enough kick to get up to speed and provide that kind of quick, jaunty driving that you want in a car that's of this class. This is a small, tossable crossover. So yeah, you want the extra power over the 2.0. Uh, personally, I would pick this over the 2.0 any day of the week, but I would also normally pick the one with the 411 gear set in the back too, because you get that little extra kick that this one is just missing. Now, would I like more power? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but you can't get a turbo in one of these, and I don't think Subaru is going to produce one anytime soon. I think our real hope for more power is the future hybrid version, which we don't know anything about yet. It's vaguely out there in the future. Uh, it's not even official, but I think it's pretty clear that Subaru is going to have an updated hybrid at some point. So let's see, floor it. Oh, yeah, that's a CVT. <laughs> CVTs kind of act weird because they hit like the target RPM and then they just kind of hold it there for whatever your optimal acceleration is. Now, if I want to, I can emulate the stepped gear set by using the paddle shifters, if you're into that. I think the paddle shifters are probably more useful for hill descents or if you're towing something uh, and you wanna have a more controlled speed, you can pop into it with the steering wheel controls there. Now, down here, I can also go into manual, which will force it to use the paddles, uh, but you know, I think with the CVT, the general driving experience is really just going to be, you know, hit the gas and go. One of the biggest improvements with this new Crosstrek is actually what we're hearing right now. Or more specifically, what we're not hearing. Improved road noise. There is less road noise than ever before in a Crosstrek. And if I was to put a pin in something that I thought really needed improvement over that old Crosstrek, it would be uh, the classic NVH, noise, vibration, and harshness. It was a little bit of that. It was good for its class, but I always felt it could be better. And with this one, Subaru has improved a quieter, just more sophisticated experience from the driver's seat. I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, this almost has like, <sighs> It's almost like I'm driving something in an upper class car because it is so quiet and it's so smooth. It's really just a joy to drive. If you look at the sales history of the Crosstrek, it's interesting to note that uh, Crosstrek is having its best years of sales into its sixth, seventh year of product line right now. Uh, so as Subaru is moving with this new 2024 model, they really had to kind of lean into all the stuff that people liked about the old car without completely re-envisioning what the Crosstrek is. Uh, because it is already selling really well. It's one of Subaru's best selling vehicles. So what you see here is a lot of what was the old Crosstrek. It's just been refined everywhere. Like the noise vibration harshness, the steering rack has a new pinion design that is borrowed from the WRX. Not the exact same one, but it's awfully close. Uh, the engine mounts have been swapped out. Little things like we now have a uh, washer on the rear camera. Very important little things to have, but I love the fact that they went through and they tweaked all of these little things that needed attention. And as much as I'd like to go into you know all the features and driving on pavement and all that, yada, yada, this is a cross truck. It's built for owners who are actually going to take their vehicles off-road. So uh, we're not going to be hanging out in town here. Uh, we're heading out to a mountain to really explore the off-road capabilities of this dual x mode system. I'm going to do a 0-60 to 60 here. I'm going to first turn off the auto start stop. And we're going to do a launch. Now I'm just going to mosh the throttle because there's nothing else I can do. And three two, one, go. Okay, off the line, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. You know, I think that's actually pretty good considering the class of vehicle this is. 
You want something faster? Get yourself a WRX. Oh, you want something faster that's also a wagon that's a Subaru with a turbo? Uh, Outback. Outback XT, that's the next step. For our off-road adventure today, we are uh, going to be climbing a mountain. <laughs> yeah, Platakill Mountain, just outside of New York. It is a ski resort, and uh, we have the slopes all to ourselves. So let's have some fun. And it has been raining for the last couple days, so I'm expecting lots of mud, which is going to be fun. So before we do this, let me give you a brief explainer as to how Subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive and specifically the X mode will help us today. So of course, symmetrical all-wheel drive has, you know, it's basically four-wheel drive. It pushes power to all four wheels uh, and it uses a center clutch in the middle to send that power to the back. Now, the way this system is, is they've actually improved it a little bit for this year where it's gonna be more aggressive in releasing and engaging that when it's necessary, which is good. So you have a faster responding all-wheel drive system in the new 2024. This one is equipped with X mode and most Subarus have at least X mode type one. This one has dual function X mode. So beyond shifting power front to back, which they use the center clutch for, they also have to shift power left to right. And that is accomplished when you have open differentials with wheel braking. Basically, as a wheel starts spinning and power is leaving that, that wheel, you don't have power for the rest of the system. This is an oversimplification, but please work with me here. Um, so what wheel braking does is it'll individually grab that wheel to prevent it from spinning. Uh, and that then allows the power to be used more effectively on the other wheels, the ones with grip. Now, different manufacturers have different levels of grip that they do, the different levels of wheel braking. Hyundai Kia is very subtle in their wheel braking. Subaru's very extreme. Um, Toyota's MTS system on the 4Runner is brutal, which is awesome. So back to the Subaru though, uh, we have two levels of X mode. Snow Dirt will do the basic wheel braking. It's pretty effective. So the next level is deep snow and mud. And what that does is it allows for more wheel spin before it grabs those brakes. And the reason you want that is sometimes you're going through uh, challenging situations and you need to keep the momentum of your wheels going so that you can churn through the complicated uh, surface. So it's kind of almost like removing a layer of traction control, but then still keeping that wheel braking system functioning. So today we're on a hill, there's gonna be mud, and we're really going to see how well this system works. We also have 8.7 inches of ground clearance, which is excellent. So we should have no problem with depth. And, uh, oh, tires. I have to talk about tires. These are all-season radials. They're just some generic Falcon economy all-season radial. So if you want, like, all-terrain tires with your vehicle, you're either going to have to add them aftermarket or you can jump up to the Crosstrek Wilderness, which we'll be testing later this year, I think around September or so which will give you a more aggressive tread for stuff like this. But today we're on all season radials and that means that we're gonna have trouble finding grip, which is really gonna stress this all wheel drive system. Let's do it. So X mode does more than just, of course, turn on and off wheel braking. It also adjusts the throttle so that we have a nice crawl ratio uh, and it modifies engine output so that we're not gonna be jerky. Uh, it really kind of just, it. it it wraps together a lot of the functions that you want. Now, is it as good as say like the 4Runner's MTS system? Well, absolutely not. But the 4Runner is a purpose-built off-road beast. And it's silly, I would even bring it up. <laughs> but it also has with its MTS system, one of the most capable uh, wheel braking traction systems you can get. It's the only reason I bring it up. So right here, we're just on, um, rock road. I can kind of feel the suspension feels really good here. It's very rough, but it's, you know, doing an ample job of soaking up uh, the surface very nicely. And we're just easing up slowly at like 10 miles an hour. So far, I have not even bothered enabling X mode because there's nothing challenging yet. Oh yeah, on this main screen over here under car info, we can go to the um, multi you know, the off-road display. And this will show not only what the wheels are doing in terms of traction, but also show us our incline and our tilt, which right now we're at 11 degrees on the climb. I always love these displays. They're so uh, useful, up to 12 degrees. 
I'm just going to call out degrees as we go. And yes, those are degrees, not grade. So don't confuse the two, please. Uh, a quick uh, conversion is 45 degree angle is 100% grade. Which I think we can pick things up here. Let's go a little quicker. We got the ground clearance. We don't have the grip with the tires, but uh, we're fine here. Now, there's no skid plate on this vehicle either. If you want a factory skid plate, I know, again, you're going to have to look at the Crosstrek Wilderness version. Uh, but even that skid plate is not that big. So I would really recommend getting a skid plate. I've used the ones from Primitive Enterprises quite a lot, and I like them a lot. Really nice guys too, but you can get them from a number of different companies. So of course you don't want to go too fast on an unknown gravel rocky road uh, because you could miss a ditch or a little drain or a rock or something and then all of a sudden you're uh, slamming your undercarriage on rough surfaces. So I'm just going to kind of keep a, a mellow pace here. We're just doing about 20 miles per hour. Climbing like a little goat. Yeehaw! Ho oh, ho ho! Bouncy! 13 degrees. Oh. One thing you have to consider when driving a Subaru, specifically off-road, is that it does have quite a bit of overhang in front of the front wheel. So um, if you're gonna tag something, it's probably on the approach. The departure angle is actually excellent, so you're not really gonna hit stuff after you get over it, so that's not much of a concern. Okay, we're almost at the top here, and then I'm thinking that we're going across the ridge line. Let's find out. Huh. Okay. Yeah, this looks like it'll be fun. Okay, let me uh, get out. I'm going to go check the course and see what we're going to be dealing with here. So even though this is a prepared course that Subaru built for us to test with today, I always feel better when I'm actually taking a look at the course ahead of me and not just trusting what somebody's told me. So I'm going to take a quick look at this first muddy section. Oh, that's squishy. Oh, Okay, so obviously this is a section that they, it's not a normal road, it's grass with mud and lots of water. That's very, very, uh, very wet. So I'm thinking the surface here, we, we do have some gravel in there there, we get a little bite here, but I do hear that as we get a little bit lower, it's gonna get more slick. So we're gonna, definitely gonna have to keep speeds down. As fun as it is to haul through here, um, this is my first time through and uh, it's gonna take it easy. Yeet, this kind of what I, I kind of wish they had mud mats in this car because I can see this is already gonna get messy. So I have of course turned on X mode. It's gonna shut off if I go over a certain speed but I'm just gonna keep the speeds pretty low here because I do not know anything about this course. I just know it's gonna probably get really tricky really quick. I don't know if you can pick it up on the microphone, but there's some grinding sounds. That is actually the hill descent control system turning on automatically when I go into X mode. And it'll keep a speed consistent with my downhill approach. So if I add more speed, it'll keep that speed. So let's go ahead and flick this around here. Oh, going up the climb. Oh, we got this. Yes, come on, you got this Subaru. Now my wheel speed can't go over 25 or it's gonna go out of X mode, but right here, it is doing awesome. Yes. Go around the corner here, probably lift a wheel in the process because it's a hard angle, but that's okay. Oh, I do like that auto wheel braking, it's kind of nice. One thing I like about Subarus is the fact that not only do they have good ground clearance, but they, there's no bits that are like hanging down. Like some vehicles, specifically the Chevy Tahoe, even though it has good ground clearance, the control arms are practically dragging on the ground, which makes it a challenge. Subaru does a good job of tucking everything up underneath. This is just a little downhill. Ooh, ooh, I like this. This is actually where I would like to have a front view camera because I can't see where anything is. Now I'm going to approach very slowly and let's see how low of a speed this um, hill descent control system can get give us. So I'm just going to creep down it. 
and it is slippery so oh, two three miles an hour two okay that's not too bad <laughs> nice so for this next section we're gonna go down okay and then we have a big open field now I have been informed that the holes in the middle of the field are deeper than this vehicle can go through uh, but there's plenty of mud to play in later so I'm not gonna worry about that I just kind of want to feel how this feels on a slippery surface in high-speed conditions so I'm gonna go ahead and disable X mode well let's keep X mode on for the hill descent portion it's a little slippery here Ah, uh, yeah this is no big deal let's go ahead and turn off X mode and then it turns off the hill descent very nice okay well let's uh let's rollick through the fields stage but it is a little on the rough side this is a good time to bring up the fact that even when traction control is off it's never really completely off oh yeah okay now this is getting deeper mud so i'm going to go ahead and turn on deep snow and mud you note i don't have to stop to do it i can just hit the button whenever i feel like i need to do something this is pretty deep there are some roots in the way roots are of course very slippery oh scrape here oh, oh hey pretty good no scraping yet it just feels like i'm going to we are using all the inches of the ground clearance today oh, the ruts from all the other cars that have come through here oh this is going to be deep right here let's get this and down we go oh yeah a little throttle going through it no problem <laughs> nice still have it in X mode, deep snow and mud. So I still get that individual wheel braking, a uh, little bit of tire spin, but I'm also getting hill descent control kicking in, which is really good on these little rocky shelves. It just gives me a little bit more control as I'm going down. Oh, love the ground clearance on this. And the fact that they're OEM tires, they're fine. You know, all seasons, they're fine for something like this. Now, obviously I can't like go full sideways like I could if I had actual like gravel tires because then you get more grip. This one, you start sliding. Yeah, you're just sliding. You're not getting that grip to pull you out of the corner. So no rally sideways slides when you don't have appropriate tires. I mean, maybe a little bit of a slide. <laughs> going through the woods, going through the woods. So I'm full throttling. This is really steep here. X mode is trying to shift the power around. Can it do it? Oh, this is so slick, so steep. Oh, we're going off the hill now. <laughs> Let's not do that. Ah, reset. Now, of course, the issue here is the fact that I'm on all season radials, OEM economy tires, basically. So it just can't get the grip. Now X mode is trying its hardest. We're still within the threshold for wheel spin and it just cannot get up. Let me try it with a little more momentum here. We definitely have the ground clearance. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. Up we go. Whoa, it's so slippy. This is so slippy. Okay, better line this time keeping the throttle, momentum, momentum, and we are up. So we had to use momentum uh, to get past the tough stuff uh, so that the tires could do their job because these tires, they're not up for that. <laughs> Today was really fun, but I don't feel like it really challenged this car. I mean, mud and hills and ruts, yeah, they're fun and they're everyday things that you need to know how well this vehicle will handle them. 
and it handled them just fine. Uh, but more complicated stuff, yeah, we're gonna get to that uh, when we can get a hold of one of these for a week a little bit later this year. Also, of course, we have the Cross Trek Wilderness coming up, and that is definitely more of a challenging adventure vehicle than this one. And, but this one is fantastic. If you don't really need like the all-terrain tires and the extra ground clearance and the slightly worse uh, fuel economy of the Wilderness version of the Cross Trek, this is definitely a sweet spot. For Driving Sports TV, I'm Ryan Douthit. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share videos, and make a few. I hope you enjoy them. And now it's time to go down the mountain. <laughs>